Hello everyone. Thank you for joining us today to learn more about CloudWatch Container Insights. I am Sudeepta Jyoti Prakash, Principal Product Manager with the Amazon CloudWatch team. And today we will learn more about the support for Prometheus metrics on Container Insights. First, we will briefly discuss the diagnostic needs of microservice-based environments, followed by a quick overview of Container Insights and Prometheus metric integrations. Then we will learn more about the updates to Container Insights. And finally, we will walk you through the demo of how it works. Let's get started with understanding the diagnostic needs of microservice-based environments. There are three key areas that we identified. First is distributed architectures are becoming more bespoke and complex, where DevOps engineers are increasingly looking for a bird's eye view of their application and understanding its components. They need an easy way to locate and isolate sources of issues by zooming in into individual components or workloads. While they investigate further, they need to derive insights from the data collected across their resources and connect the dots between, for example, their errors in metrics and logs. With these in mind, we launched CloudWatch Container Insights in 2019 to collect, aggregate, and summarize metrics and logs from your containerized applications and microservices. Container Insights is available for Amazon Elastic Container Service, that's Amazon ECS, Amazon Elastic Kubernetes Services, that's Amazon EKS, and Kubernetes platforms on Amazon EC2. Amazon ECS support includes support for Fargate. Next, many of you might also be aware of Prometheus, a popular open source monitoring tool that graduated as a CNCF project with a large active customer base and community of practitioners. Monitoring workloads here are pretty easy. You can start off by looking at some of the basic set of workloads such as Nginx, HAProxy, Mancache, and many more. These really depend on your application and their needs. From customer feedback, we learned that there's a need to monitor these popular workloads or components within containerized environments. Hence, we now have the support to monitor workload metrics on container insights using Prometheus endpoints available in beta today. So what's new? This new release automatically collects, filters, and creates aggregated CloudWatch metrics from your workloads. You can now utilize pre-selected services that are scraped and automatically enriched with metadata, such as cluster and pod names. The support scraping is also available for 150 plus open source third-party exporters compatible with open metrics. We also support custom metric scraping on services to ingest as CloudWatch metrics. For example, if you want to collect any application metrics from your namespaces, you could do so today. So how does all of this work? You can start by running the CloudWatch agent in the Kubernetes cluster. The agent now supports Prometheus configuration, discovery, and publishing all high fidelity and cardinality Prometheus metrics and metadata in the form of embedded metric format to CloudWatch logs. As mentioned earlier, custom metrics available for curated sets of dimensions that are fully configurable. Publishing aggregated Prometheus metrics as CloudWatch custom metric statistics reduces the number of metrics needed to monitor, alarm, and troubleshoot performance and performance problems and failures. Finally, you can analyze the high cardinality or high fidelity Prometheus metrics using CloudWatch logs inside query language to isolate specific pods and labels impacting the health of the performance of your containerized environments. Here's an example of EKS cluster as a runtime environment configured with the CloudWatch agent for investing Prometheus metrics as EMF events, as mentioned previously, into CloudWatch. We use Nginx as an ingress controller as a scrape target. There is a demo app to generate some sample traffic. We have three namespaces in the EKS cluster, the Amazon CloudWatch, which hosts the CloudWatch Prometheus agent, the Nginx ingress sample, which, which we have uh, for the ingress controller for the Nginx running, and Nginx sample traffic, which hosts our sample app, including the traffic generator. The traffic generator makes some HTTP calls routed by the 
Nginx Ingress. The Nginx Ingress controller exposes the statistics for these HTTP calls as Prometheus metrics. And these metrics are finally flushed to CloudWatch Container Insights through the CloudWatch agent enabled with Prometheus. Now let's switch to viewing all of this in action. I'm navigated to the CloudWatch homepage where you can essentially see the alarms by the AWS services triggered along with the recent alarms where, for example, there's an app mesh alarm that's being that's utilizing anomaly detection. Here's a default dashboard that I've attached, which basically looks at pet adoption demo application, essentially what we'll be talking about today in detail. Um, and it, it actually gives more information regarding, for example, the app mesh envoy downstream um, that I'm more interested in monitoring. To give a little more overview of the application itself, I'm navigating to the service lens service map. Service map is basically a transactional view of all of the components within your microservice space environment. Here, the pet adoption website actually has a couple of ECS and EKS clusters, a few additional components such as APIs, databases, typically what you would see in a microservice based environment. With this context, I would love to switch to viewing the Container Insights console that you had previously perhaps come across. Uh, you would essentially navigate to the CloudWatch homepage and under Overview, you can see Container Insights. This essentially provides all the pre-canned dashboards or predefined dashboards that are created using the data that's collected by the CloudWatch agent on your EKS cluster. You can also navigate to other pre-canned dashboards such as EKS node level dashboard, which is also filterable by the different nodes. You can also scroll down to view pod level information, filter or sort by looking at various Parts that matter most to you based on higher utilization of CPU or memory as such. We have essentially created the same experience with the new look and feel under the left navigation of Container Insights. You can navigate to Performance Monitoring, which essentially provides the same views with the new look and feel. As I've navigated to this console, you can see the similar experience where you can select multiple uh, predefined views, such as EKS namespace, nodes, services, pods, and so on, while it also correlates the alarms that are associated with these metrics as such. In addition to this is the resource view. Essentially, a lot of our customers gave us feedback that Looking at all of the various components within a containerized environment can be cumbersome, especially if you have thousands of clusters, for example. So we have made it easier for you to look at these resources at an individual level. Um, first, with the list view, you can see there are various types of resources. I can quickly type in cluster, and this essentially filters down the list view by cluster. You can sort by CPU and memory so that you can focus on the areas that matter most to you. Here you can see that um, pet site as a cluster is actually uh, high on CPU utilization and you might want to uh, dive deep further on it. If you click on the name, it essentially takes you to the same performance dashboard that you see um, that you saw earlier. You can also scroll down to actually look at all the alarms associated with your various resources. This simply helps you keep an overview on all the predefined alarms that helps you keep a check on the application health itself. We've also provided the map view where if I navigate quickly to the map view right here, it essentially paints a view of all of your cluster um, node namespace level data, the hierarchy of your containerized application in the form of a map. As you can see, there are multiple such clusters that I have set up in this particular application, and I can quickly browse through all of the various components to view some of the various uh, telemetry that they come across. So if I quickly hover on each of these nodes, you're also provided with an overview of CPU memory and the network statistics. These quickly help you understand what might be some of the nodes that you are interested in focusing on. Of course, you can always focus on certain areas by filtering using cluster or node level, or even click on view subtree to identify a certain area that you would like to focus on further. 
Sometimes these maps can be quite overwhelming. You might have, again, hundreds of clusters with a lot of these components, and it would be hard to understand where you begin troubleshooting. So we've also provided CPU and memory more that you can toggle between over the right here. It essentially helps you look at certain areas that are colored with a much more darker shade, but it helps you focus on areas where there is high issues as such. The CPU and memory mode essentially helps you isolate areas that you'd like to focus your attention on. For example, you can see in these ECS clusters that the CPU utilization is pretty high at 53%. And if I toggle to the memory mode, you can also see these color, sh color schemes changing in order to help you look at uh, what are the areas that you should focus your attention on. Um, the color scheming is basically um, looking at all of the nodes on your map and essentially trying to focus your attention on areas that might require um, further investigation. Uh, while you can hover to learn a little bit about the statistics, you can always click on these resources to have the draw open, essentially, which provides uh, all the same set of statistics in the context of time. CPU utilization of 53% uh, uh, might be okay right now, but if it's slowly ramping up over time, you might want to do some further investigation on it. Going back to the Prometheus metrics that we earlier set up, you can also see some of the clusters have namespaces such as HA proxy, memcache, and nginx. This is the same nginx that we configured previously uh, with the scraper and so on. So uh, when I actually uh, hover over the controller metrics, you can see that there's a Prometheus icon over this. If I click on this particular node and say view dashboard, you are automatically navigated to the pre canned or predefined dashboard for Prometheus Nginx, which has all the information regarding controller request volume, connections, and so on. Along with that, you can also look at the pod level metrics um, that are collected, CPU and memory. You can also navigate to other Prometheus-based workloads that you are either discovering as part of um, the setup or you have configured it yourself. For example, I'm navigating to the App Mesh dashboard where you can see uh, multiple pre-canned metrics that come out, such as total uh, heap, total envoy heap, memcache failures, and so on. And you can further dive deep into the total traffic, inbound and outbound, and the egress data itself. So there's a lot of rich telemetry that we collect and also visualize it so that it's useful uh, for you in terms of troubleshooting your workload level uh, data as such. And tying all of this back to the application context as well, I'd like to go back to our service map. Here in the service map, if you have, for example, the pet list or pet site as one of the areas that you'd like to focus your attention on, you can always click on view container insights. Now you're navigating from the application level to the, the views that help you understand both the workload level and infrastructure level data. You can always click on one of these nodes that's running a workload such as Nginx or App Mesh and you can dive deep further into the automatic dashboards we have created, or you can investigate further at a cluster namespace or the node level to identify if there's any issues in the infrastructure itself. Now I would like to quickly walk you through how all of this works and what powers some of the experience that you see with Container Insights. Starting with uh, navigating to the log groups, as you can see, there are multiple log groups that are created once you opt in to container insights on your EKS cluster. You can see five specific log groups that are collecting data from various parts of your application. I'll navigate to the performance uh, log group and look at one of the log streams. Here you can see that we maintain the rich level and high cardinality of data that's coming from your pods or your clusters and so on. 
Here you can see some of the metrics at the pod level, for example, uh, reserve capacity, memory utilization, and so on. So uh, you can always go back to these a rich set of logs that we maintain so that in case you're missing the context or correlation between the metrics and your application itself, you have all the information in the logs to dive deep further. Going back to the log groups and viewing the performance metrics that we're collecting from our Prometheus endpoints, these are similarly set up using the EMF format as I've mentioned previously. Here again, at the cluster level, you are able to understand that there is a memcache that has been set up, followed by all the specific metrics that are collected from your endpoint as such. And this, again, is what powers container insights overall and helps you tie the, tie the dots together between your metrics logs on a single pane of glass. In summary, we spoke about a few tools that help with the diagnostic needs of microservice-based environments. First, to understand distributed architectures, you can use the Container Insights resource view with map and list modes to organize all of your containerized resources. Next, to zoom into individual components, you can use the automatic dashboards available on Container Insights to narrow down to specific namespaces, services, and pods to isolate health and performance issues. Finally, to derive insights from the data aggregated, you can connect the dots between metrics and logs collected from across your application. This can be on Service Lens, Container Insights, or CloudWatch Logs Insights. You can learn more about the updates and support for Prometheus in the documentation link below. Once again, thank you for joining us today and learning more about Container Insights.